Welcome Hornets. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, the transformations. These are our function notation transformations and how they work. So we're going to start off very quickly by looking at what are the basic types of transformations. These are the ones that you learned in your Algebra 2 and hopefully continue to practice in your pre-calculus. So I'm just going to read through them very quickly. They are exactly what you would expect. The basic types of transformations given in f of x are f of x minus c. This represents a horizontal shift to the uh, c units to the right. f of x plus c represents a horizontal shift, c units to the left. f of x, the quantity minus c, represents a vertical shift, c units downward. Um, f, of x, uh, f of x, the quantity plus c, represents a vertical shift, c units upward. We have a negative in front of the x. We'll represent or re identify a reflection about the x-axis. An f of negative x represents a reflection about the y-axis. Notice that uh, what we get, uh, if I'm putting a negative in front of the f of x, f of x represents y. So a negative y represents the x-axis. A negative x represents the y-axis. When we use both, a negative f of negative x, we're, re we're reflecting around the origin. Then we have the vertical and horizontal stretches. If we have a value, a, that is greater than 1 in front of a function f of x, this will cause all of the y values to grow, and therefore we have what is referred to as a vertical stretch. If our value in front of the f of x is between 0 and 1, then we have what is referred to as a vertical shrink or vertical compression. All of our y values are now being multiplied by a smaller value than 1, and they are being reduced. The ones that are most difficult are the horizontal compressions and shrink and the horizontal stretch. The reason for this is because they have a reciprocal effect, just like you saw in your trig last year when you were working with uh, the periods of a uh, trig function. Our value in front of the theta represented 2 pi divided by that value, and we had a reciprocal effect. So what ends up happening is when we have a value of a in front of x, where a is between greater than 1, this causes the values that we are plugging in to grow faster, and we get larger results. So we have what is referred to as a horizontal compression or horizontal shrink. When we plug in a value of a that is between 0 and 1 in front of the x, this creates a horizontal stretch. That means that our x values are going out versus being squished in. Okay. Now, what we've seen uh, from our previous work, let's just take a look. This is our complete function notation identification. And you'll notice right down below it, I have remind, I'm have i trying to remind you about the trig because this is exactly the same thing that you saw in trig, except the f represents the function that you're working with. Whether that function is a cosine, sine, tangent, whether it's x squared, y squared, or x squared, x cubed, square root of x, whatever it might be. So when we're looking at our function in function notation, we have our vertical dilation outside. Please remember dilation refers to the width of the curve or how quickly it's moving up and down. We have our horizontal dilation right here. Please remember this is not the same thing as a geometric dilation. Geometric dilations cause similar values to expand and grow, whereas or shrink down. This is an algebraic dilation. We have our horizontal movement, which is our horizontal shift. That's the C inside. And then our vertical shift outside. Okay, so just be aware. And this is my reminder that our B value inside has a reciprocal effect when we were working with trigonometry. It either lengthened or shortened the uh, cycle. This is now having a reciprocal effect on how quickly it's moving up, i.e. the points, as we go from value to value. Let's very quickly just take a, a look at when things happen and when they come first and second, and then we will end. So here we go. Let's take a look at our first example. y equals negative f of negative x minus 2. 
We always work from the inside out. So we tackle that negative. We're going to have our reflection through the y-axis first. Then we reflect through the x-axis. Together, they constitute the origin. Once we have done the two reflections, we then do our vertical shift down two. If we don't have any reflections, we're just working with our horizontal and vertical shift. Since the horizontal is inside of the parentheses and we are working with from the inside out, we work with our horizontal shift first and then we work with our vertical shift. When we have pieces outside and inside, we are going to work first inside. So we're going to work with our horizontal shift, left three, then we are going to reflect through the x-axis and then we apply our vertical shift of up one. Notice how we're working from the inside out. If we were comparing and going back to the original that I was looking at, we would start with our horizontal shift, follow it by our horizontal dilation, that horizontal stretch and uh, shrink, followed by our vertical dilation or our vertical stretch and shrink, and finish with our vertical shift. Now, some people will often say you should just go ahead and do your reflections first, then do your vertical and horizontal shift, but I warn you, sometimes moving things out of order are going to create problems, and so you should be very careful. Work from the inside out. Thank you very much, and uh, please do the following problems to practice, and you'll be all done. Thank you, Hornets. Have a great day. Take care, please.